right now on 5 on your side at 10. Abundant sunshine. Another stunner of a day for August on the way. When the typical summer warmth returns and if any rain chances arrive as it heats up. A poet on death row set to be executed in a matter of weeks. Tonight, the celebration of his art just hours before a crucial hearing that could spare his life. Our top story, an accused arsonist caught on camera. Tonight, the terrifying crime investigators are calling random. I'm just sh in shock and, and absolute utter disbelief. That man is in jail charged with intentionally setting his neighbor's home on fire while they were asleep. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. This happened in North St. Louis County on Riverwoods Estates Boulevard between Hottershell and Charbonnier Roads. New tonight, Robert Townsend shows us the video that stunned police and neighbors. Investigators say in the thick of the night, just after one Tuesday morning, a couple's ring security system caught this man on video intentionally setting their home in fluorescent on fire. All of a sudden, your whole world is on fire. Sandy Kessler is the couple's insurance agent and friend. She says their neighbor suspect, Joshua Thomas, first rode an electric scooter down to Craig and Teresa Lakenberger's home on Riverwood Estates Boulevard, got off the scooter, and then walked onto their front porch. He is literally chilling and looking at his phone or doing something on his phone while he's about ready to set their house on fire. According to a probable cause statement, Thomas suddenly lit an object and placed it next to the exterior wall of the couple's front porch while they slept. He lights the igniter and stands there and watches it until it's big enough that he can walk away knowing it's going to do damage. Police say flames raced across the couple's roof, blew off their garage door, destroyed their home of 40 years, their cars in their garage, and more. The couple got out of their house thanks to their barking dog and their smoke alarm. Kessler is convinced, without a doubt, that's what saved their lives. They got up and in seconds got out the back of the house. Police arrested Thomas down the street at his home. They say he was still wearing the same red mask and black clothing he had on in this video. Absolutely random. They don't know each other. Kessler will help our friends rebuild. They're wonderful people and they are gonna get back up. Robert Townsend, five on your side. The couple is now staying at a hotel. Thomas is charged with first degree arson. Tonight, St. Louis County Police are investigating the shooting death of a teenage boy in Lime. The shooting happened just before one this afternoon at a home on Getz Avenue. Police have not released many details, only saying they're investigating this as a suspicious death. We talked to a neighbor who heard the commotion. Just heard a real low pop. Uh, it's one of those distinct sounds that you can kind of know what it is. One of the kids knocked on the window and called the police, called the ambulance. Investigators are asking anyone with information to call county police at 636-529-8210. You can also leave an anonymous tip with Crime Stoppers. That number is 866-371-TIPS. We have new information tonight in an early morning deadly hit and run in Jennings. Police have identified the victim as 71 year old Vanessa Ford. She died after being hit by a car near Wilburn Drive. The car then took off. Police are still looking for a suspect. Turning now to the weather impact forecast. It was a comfortable night at the old ballpark. Oh, yeah, we are getting a break from the usual August heat and humidity. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell, you say, though, it's not going to last long. No, we've got a couple more days to deal with nice, comfortable conditions. Of course, the Cardinals in this home stand with the Brewers. Not a lot of big heat at the ballpark tonight. Not a lot of big heat around St. Louis. It is incredibly comfortable looking out over the metro area right now. And it stays that way into tomorrow morning. If not cool, we're already down to 68 degrees right now. Even though we have some clouds sliding in from the north and west, we will have a partly to at times mostly cloudy sky during the overnight hours. But here's the deal. We're already in the low to mid 60s in a lot of places, easily down into the 50s tomorrow morning. This air is so dry, we just don't get the opportunity for any of those showers that are farther to the north to reach the ground. And that leaves us with the cozy weather continuing here for the next few days. It's not crystal clear, but 
certainly it's nice. It will turn warmer though as we head into the weekend. We'll talk more about the weekend forecast and if that warmer air is going to increase our chances for rain. It's starting to get a little dry. Might need to use that sprinkler before the end of the week. We'll see you in a few minutes, Mike. Day three of school is approaching and some parents say they are seeing improvement in transportation on day two. Families who didn't have their ride show up yesterday say they had one today. However, some parents told us that transportation didn't show up and they had to take their kids themselves. SLPS lost multiple buses recently when vendors had delays. Parents are saying they're having to lean on each other. I know they're working very hard to um, to get it straightened out, um, but the fact is we don't know how long it will take. And so having a backup plan, connecting with other parents and families is essential. Parents having trouble with transportation can call 314-633-5107. Tonight, St. Louis police are asking for your help to find the gunman wanted for a double shooting near downtown. The gunfire broke out around 6 Sunday morning at the BP station that was on South Broadway. Two men were shot and taken to the hospital. Police are looking for a black infinity with heavy damage to the front and no visible plates. If you recognize the car or the gunman, call Crime Stoppers 866-371-TIPS. You will remain anonymous. Tomorrow, a judge could decide the fate of a man who has been sitting on death row for decades. Marcellus Williams is scheduled to be executed September 24th. He is convicted of killing former, former Post-Dispatch reporter Felicia Gale in 1998. St. Louis County Prosecutor Rusley Bell is trying to overturn the conviction, claiming DNA evidence does not link him to the crime. Those who know Marcellus Williams know him as an avid poet who has spent much of his time behind bars seeking faith and writing. Within the past couple of hours, poetry lovers honored Williams ahead of tomorrow's court hearing. And new tonight, Brent Solomon takes us to the Grove for a showcase of support. But it's confusion meets delusion when illusion's all you see. If words have power. Not just release uh, that pent up trauma, but also to heal. Poet Deja Polk, better known as Energy, hopes her words serve as a change agent. This could be a possibility for so many others. Uh, it doesn't hit you until it hits you. It's why those calling for justice united behind these four walls, coming together as one voice. Making it to our destiny so fast. The Word Up spoken event happens every Tuesday night here at Java in the Grove. But tonight, it's in honor of one man, Marcellus Williams. But over the years, we have amplified some of his poems. So we put together a little booklet. It's about 10 poems of his together. Williams was convicted in 1998 in the stabbing death of former social worker and newspaper reporter Felicia Gale. Prosecutor Wesley Bell says Williams is innocent, and that finds these poetry lovers coming together. We are highlighting an incredible story of a poet that is on death row. And clinging to hope that the judge will side with the prosecutor. And of course, lately in our court system, in our state with wrongful convictions, there has been some success, so I'm also leaning on that success. Well, maybe even poetry gave him hope. And so to be able to use that same thing that kept him sane, you know, during that time period that he was, or he is, you know, in this situation, um, I just, I really believe that he deserves this. Brent Solomon, five on your side. Tomorrow's hearing is scheduled for 8.30 in the morning in Clayton. Tonight, it is much harder to change your gender on your ID. The Missouri Department of Revenue removed a form from its website to do so without announcing the change. Now, Missourians must provide a court order or proof of gender affirmation surgery. It's a change sparking reaction from advocates and lawmakers. Not having some type of conversation with the community really impacts uh, a state's ability to say, we care about what you think, of, you know, we care about what you think or what you say. Why was it quietly rolled out? This isn't something like government should be fully transparent. Government should, this government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. So if something as significant as gender and a policy is going to be changed or, or written or pushed out, the people should know. We asked the Department of Revenue what prompted this and if they can make these changes without notice. 
The department did not respond. St. Louis is putting more than $3 million to improving a part of 7th Street. The stretch of road sits between America Center and Bush Stadium. Officials say it'll add a new bike lane, streets, sidewalks, and more to make 7th Street more pedestrian friendly. St. Louis Cardinals are supporting the project. However, local businesses do have some concerns. I think the voice of the community and the businesses, um, they should matter in making these decisions. It shouldn't just be um, those people making the decisions that disrupt business in the downtown area. The Board of Public Service says construction will start next month and will last through next summer. Sweet Home Chicago for the former tenants of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We're live tonight at night two of the DNC. Plus, the St. Louis Mobile Clinic at the center of a convention controversy. We verify if this was planned by the Democrats. Instead of the lazy, hazy days of summer, it's more like the invigorating mornings of autumn. There are changes arriving this weekend that will decrease our comfort levels.